God, for your love and your mercy and your watch care over us. Lord, we just ask you now to bless today. Thank you, Father, for all you do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Psalm number 90. We're going to look at four different places this morning. We're going to look at one word in the Bible. And I don't... Uh, um, we Sometimes I'll preach. We'll preach from a chapter here. We'll do different things. Teach. I'm not really... Uh, I'm just going to preach to you for a few minutes. So I want you to listen. And we're going to look at this word here this morning. So... Hopefully you'll put your attention up this way. Let me preach to you for a few minutes. And uh, Johnny, no barking. All right. So Psalm number 90 and verse number 12. It says, uh, so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Now, the next portion of scripture that I want you to look at this morning you'll find in the book of Psalms and Psalm or that's in the book of Psalms in the book of Proverbs Proverbs chapter number two Proverbs chapter two verse number one we're going to look here read a couple verses here in Proverbs chapter two verse number one says my son if thou wilt receive my words notice the terminology if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear. See that word incline the ear there? He said it means to open your ears. It means to hearken. It means to listen. If you know, if, you, if you're ever around young people or old people or whatever, you have to say, hey, listen. Right? Young people, listen, hey, listen up here, listen. You know, you're trying, what you're trying to do, you're trying to get folks' attention. Get their mind to focus. When someone says that, it's not a bad thing. Amen? Hey, listen. Because our minds wonder. How many of your mind wonders? Right now your mind's wondering. I mean, I got to work to keep my own attention. I mean, I was picking picky prickles out of uh, Bean's foot a minute ago and, man, trying to get ready to preach. I want to listen to the singing. I want to sing. And there's a thousand things. So listen. He said here, he said, so that thou incline thine ear. He said, God said, I've got to have your attention. If I'm going to help you, you've got to listen. So that thou incline thine ear. The best illustration of that that I can give you is if you're ever out in the farm, you'll see what they what they call a, a, a donkey or a mule or a jackass. And you'll see those things and they got ears and their ears will bend. Old Curtis Hudson used to say, when I do that right there, that means say amen or listen. He, when he bend the ear, you ever hear people do this right here? Cup their ear while they're trying to hear? Listen. Give ear. He said, so that thou incline thine ear unto what? Unto wisdom. And look at the word. And apply thine heart to understanding. See that word again? Apply. Remember the first time we read it in Psalm number 90? He said, uh, apply. We're going to look at it again here. Those four instances where you'll find that verse in the Bible. Let's look at another one. Look at uh, Proverbs uh, chapter number 22. Proverbs 22. Look at this verse. Bow down thine ear. The Bible says, He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear. Whose responsibility is it to hear? It's yours. Who makes the decision whether or not to hear? You do. It's your choice. It's your decision. Now, as a speaker, whoever's done the speaking can, can try to make you listen. We can use illustrations. We can move our hands. We can change whatever. I don't. Tr you don't try to do those things to make a presentation, but you're trying to get people's attention. But there's only so much that you can do. 
People have to make a choice. He said, bow down thine ear, listen, and hear the words of the wise. And then what? Apply. Apply thine heart unto my knowledge. Apply. See that word? Great word. We're going to four times, only four times that word is in the Bible. We're going to look at all four times. That's the third. Let's look at the last time we find that verse in the Bible. Look in in Proverbs chapter 23, verse number 12. Apply thine heart unto what? Instruction. Every time you see the word apply, you'll see along with it, heart. You know what the heart is? That's who you are. When the Bible talks about heart, that's, that's what makes you tick. That's what you are. That's, that's something deep down in the recesses of you that's not necessarily seen, but it's what it's, we use the word that will say someone doesn't have any heart. They quit. They give up. They didn't even try. They don't have any heart. They're easy. They're a pushover. They're soft. They got no heart. Or sometimes we'll say they got no guts. As some people have told me in the old Bible, they say in the old times, and they say you got no, they, they use the word liver. You got no liver. You got no gall. You got no heart. He said here, apply thine heart unto what? Instruction. And thine ears to the words of a knowledge. Exactly. It means to make a commitment. Here's what's, here's what's missing. No one wants to make a commitment. I'm going to give you another verse that doesn't have that word in it, but turn to Proverbs chapter number 1, verse number 5. Proverbs chapter 1 and verse number 5. Look at Proverbs 1, 5 says, A wise man will hear and will what? Increase learning. And a man of understanding, look at this next word, this next thing, shall attain. Look at that word attain. It means reach out. It means reach your goal. It means, listen, someone's in front of you, you attain. It means get out of my way, I'm coming through. It means I'm not going to accept mediocrity. I'm not going to stand by whenever I can get closer to the source. I'm going to get as close as I can because I want to hear what's being said. I'm not going to settle for on the outskirts. Remember the story about a man in the Bible named Zacchaeus? Zacchaeus, one day the Bible said he was a man of a short stature and he wanted to hear Jesus. And what did he do? He went out and he found a tree and he climbed up in the tree. Why? Because he wanted to see Jesus. Zacchaeus was the kind of man that wants to attain. He had a purpose. He had a goal. He had a mission. And he wasn't going to be set aside. And you know what Jesus did? He honored that. He came to where Zacchaeus was and looked up in the tree and he said, you want to see me? Here I am. He said, matter of fact, he said, I'm going to go to your house today and eat at your house. You know what God is looking for? He's looking for some people that want to see him. He's looking for somebody that wants to know him. God in heaven, the Bible said his eyes search and his, his, his heart, he searches to see if there's anybody that wants to know him, that wants to have a relationship with him, that wants to walk with him, that wants to commune with him, that wants to have fellowship with him. And even today in the 20th, 21st century in this year 2021 hey God's looking for somebody that will stir themselves up somebody that will shake themselves somebody that will say God I don't want to just be a nominal Christian I want to know the word of God I want to have a walk with God I want to get up in the morning and I'm going to open my Bible up and I'm going to commune with God and fellowship with God God's looking for somebody that wants to know him Somebody that wants to fellowship with him. Somebody that wants to have a relationship with him. You can either accept mediocrity. And the way you accept mediocrity is you don't apply yourself. Just halfway. Half in, half out. What do we want to be? Do we want to apply ourselves or not? That's what the Bible says. He's, listen, let's look at these four places where I just told you. I want you to learn something this morning. I want to preach to you, but I want you to learn also. Uh, Psalm 90, verse number 12. So teach us to number our days. 
that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Four times that word applies in the Bible. All four times it has a different different definition. Isn't that something? You know, words have meanings, right? And when we study something, we find out what the meanings of the word are. And here, that word very simply means to fill an empty place. It means to fill the void. So look what the verse says. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. You got how many of you? How many of you here have 24 hours in a day? How many of you here? Anybody here? We all do. We all, people say all the time, boy, I just don't have time to get anything done. You know, the truth of the matter is, you get done what you, what you, get, what you want to get done, what you, de- you determine to get done. You, you try your best, you, you make a schedule, you make a plan, you, you, you formulate it in your mind, and you say, this is what I'm going to do, and you strive to do that. But there are other people that just kind of get up and loaf through life. Well, if I can do this, I'll do that. And if I can do it, I'll get it done. But if not, who cares? It doesn't really matter anyway. Is there anything that you've got to do that's important? Is there anything that's urgent? Is there anything that in your mind you say, you know what? If I don't do this, I'm going to be in peril. I'm going to be in trouble. I'm going to tell you something this morning by way of testimony. As far as I'm concerned, my Bible reading is something that's an emergency. I need to read the Word of God. It doesn't matter I want to read the Word of God. I need to pray. I don't need to pray less. I need to pray more. I tell you what, I'm pretty dis- dis- discouraged. I'm pretty aggravated with myself because I don't pray as much as I need to pray. We live in a world today where young people are growing up and they don't know God and they don't know the Bible and our churches and we hear about preachers quitting and churches shutting down and all this stuff going on and somebody needs to realize how urgent and matter it is to pray and talk to God and get a hold of God and say, God, help us. It's an urgent thing to pray. But if you don't read your Bible, you won't pray. What do you, what's our attitude about the Bible? Well, I got 24 hours in the day. I guess somewhere in there, if nothing else is going on, I'll get my Bible out. Well, if I, if I get a little chance, I'll get my Bible out. I'm going to tell you something. Listen. We, we take time to eat. We take time to sleep. We take time to do whatever else it is. We ought to say, you know what? I'm going to fill some time in my day with the reading and the meditating and the thoughts of God's Word. Fill up the space. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts into wisdom. That word apply there means to fill up the space. Fill up your time with things that matter. You know, we all have recreation, but I tell you what, if all we do is loaf all the time, then we, we're, not, we're not doing what the Bible says. Teach us to number our days. Amen. I only have one chance. I only have one life. I only have today, one time. And once today is gone, I don't have an opportunity to get it back. I really, the truth of the matter is, I don't have a moment to waste. I need to fill up my days with things that matter. Amen. And that's, that's talking about people. I don't want to be around people that hurt me. I I want to be around people either that I can help or that will help me. I don't want to just be or be casual and loaf my life away. Listen, if you got time to party, go ahead. I don't have time to party. I don't want to play my life away. I don't want to party my life away. I want to do something that matters. We just sit for hours and hours and hours. It's a shame. They got this thing called soap operas. How many of you know what that is? Listen, and people watch. You say, what is that? That's something the devil invented for women to sit around and do when they didn't have anything else. Their kids are off at school. Their husband's off somewhere. So they sit around and watch the soap operas. And they trifle their time away. Not to mention they pervert their minds with a bunch of filth and garbage. That's a tool of the devil to fill up your mind with nonsense. You got an hour or two before you go to bed. What are you going to do? Well, you could read your Bible or you could watch the news. You could watch the nonsense on the news. You could be entertained by what this politician said today or what that politician said today or what's going on in 10 buck 2, which don't mean a thing to me or you. Or else you can say, you know what? I've got a wife and a family. I've got a child, uh, children. I've got a husband. I've got responsibilities. I need to read the Bible. And you can take 45 minutes or half an hour or five minutes and open up the Word of God and say, God, give me something out of this book right here. 
People say, I'm just preaching to you this morning, so don't just don't buckle your seatbelt, all right? Listen, people say, well, I just don't get anything out of the Bible. You know what I'm going to tell you to do? Ask God to give you something out of the Bible. When you pray, say, God, I, I'm, I'm, I'm stupid. I'm mortal. I'm a human being. And this book is the eternal word of God. This book is heavenly written. God, my mind is messed up and perverted. And there's so many bad stuff in here. God, if I want to get anything out of this book, you're going to have to help me. The Holy Spirit, I believe, lives inside of me. And he's the author through the book help me to understand the word of God now listen I don't mean to say this arrogantly but I've been saved since I was seven and I've been reading this book and, and reading it and read it and read it and read it and read it and almost every time I open it up to read it I say God help me to understand it I don't say God give me a commentary to someone else to teach it to me God, somebody tell me what the Bible says. No, I want God to teach me His Word. I want to open my Bible up and commune with God as a man communes with his God. And I want God to teach me His Word. You say, you think God will do that? Who do you think you are? I think I'm an unworthy, filthy, rotten sinner that has a longing and a desire in his heart to have God instruct and teach him from His book. Amen. Now, I don't know about you, but... I. I'd rather have the real thing than the assistant. That's right. If I'm going to go to a class somewhere and there's a master teacher and I'm expecting him to teach me and I've gone out of my way to get there, I don't want the assistant to show up. Amen? Amen? You, know what I, you know what? At best, you know what I am? I'm the assistant. You know what the preacher is? The assistant. But you know most Christians live to hear what the preacher has to say when they themselves could meet with the master every day. You're settling for second best if all you get is what the preacher has to say. Hey, listen, wherever the preacher, if he, he better be getting it from the Word of God himself. But most of them don't even do that. Amen. Most of them don't even read enough Bible to get a, a message from God. They just give you a, somebody else's sermon or some leftover something else. But you and I, if you got the best preacher in the country and he reads his Bible and studies it, it's not enough to hear what he says. We need to have a longing and a desire to fill up the space with what God says young people God will communicate with you when I was a young person I used to read my Bible and I started reading my Bible and, and, and listen and I would be looking at it and all of a sudden I would see things in there that God was saying to me and I, I, would, I would get so excited. And then the devil would come along and say, well, if God really said that, then somebody else would have preached about it. Or you would have heard somebody else preach about it. But it was a good day when I realized, you know what? God was communicating to me. He was teaching me from His Word. He was opening His book to me. And I began to get excited about stuff. And I'd mark it in my Bible. And I would say, every once in a while, I'd find somebody and listen. I'd say, hey, look what the Bible says. And then I'd think, man, somebody ought to preach that. And then I would, the Lord would say, well, why don't you preach it? And I said, I'm not a preacher. One of the first messages I ever preached, they had this thing on the church thing called the night bus. And uh, I, I, I said, I'm going to preach. I started to preach. I made it public. I'm supposed to preach. And uh, my, my roommate there in the school said, well, you better preach. I said, I, I guess so. And they said, uh, you got this night bus. They called it the preaching bus. We well, we'd let everybody off, you know, for the day, for the bus route. And uh, we'd have three minutes to preach. Well, man, that, you can just get up there and stammer and spit and slobber for three minutes. And so we had to sign up that we, were gonna, we had a message. And so I had a message. I signed up. Three minutes. I can do that. The only thing is, that week hardly anybody signed up. And they all got ready. They said, guess what? Not very many people signed up. So you get more than three minutes. You get eight minutes. And the other guy said, yeah. And I said, dear Lord, I don't want eight minutes. I want three minutes. But the thing is, I had a message from God on my heart. I had a sermon that I had read in my Bible. I had something to preach. And the truth of the matter is, I got up and eight minutes went just like that. And there was a fire burning on the inside. Why? It was not what someone else said. It was not me making up something. It was what God had spoken to my heart from His Word. And that same God wants to speak to you if you apply your heart to wisdom. Look what it, listen, look at the next time you see that verse in the Bible. In Proverbs chapter number 2. Let's read this again. It says, My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, 
so that thou incline thine ear into wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge. Think about that. You ever heard a little child say, I want a drink? Or if you want to ride with us sometime and Johnny wants his bink at? And I say, where is his blanket? We forgot it. Why did you forget it? The trip is ruined. Because I'm going to hear Johnny holler on my blanket. If he don't get his blanket, I get his blanket. I don't want to hear him holler about it. If thou criest after knowledge. We're the the weirdest bunch of Christians I've ever seen. In this day and time, we settle for being stupid, not knowing the things of God. We're we're content with that. I want to know what God has for me. Amen. I believe God's up in heaven saying, hey, anybody down there crying after knowledge? Is anybody hungry for knowledge? Is there anybody who wants to know me? Is there anybody who wants to learn about me? And the angel says, yeah, there's a few here. There's one over there. There's one. It's got his, there's one reading his Bible and he reads it and he, but he, and he gets sleepy. And so he stands up to read it. Anybody ever stand up to read your Bible? And he slapped herself. I said, look at that guy over there. Dummy. He's smacking himself in the head. He's trying to read it. He's trying to walk and he's drinking coffee and pouring down the caffeine. And God says, help him. He wants to know the book. The, his flesh is weak, but his spirit's willing He's fighting the good fight. He goes to church. He studies. He has a longing. God says, that's what I'm looking for. He's crying after knowledge. Look what the Bible says. So then incline thine heart unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding. If thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasures. The other day we were down at the farm and Autumn and Hannah had the metal detector. And they were trying to find a place to go. I said, go down there by that big rock, you know. And uh, they're down there. And I look and Autumn, you know, Autumn. I mean, you wouldn't expect this out of Autumn. But she's down there with a shovel just a digging and dirt flying. I mean, she's just digging and looking. And a little bit later I saw her walking through the field with a big long metal uh, lightning rod and something else. And boy, she was proud of that junk that she had found but they were looking for it why because you took that metal detector over that and it made a little beeping sound and there's something in there so you dig to look for it i tell you what listen if you open this book up there'll be a little radar on the inside there's something there and you read and you'll find the things that god has for you searches for as for hid treasures look at verse five does god lie Look what it says. Then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. When? When you look for it. When you long for it. uh, Listen, when you want to find it, then you'll find it. You see, there's so many distractions. There's all kinds of distractions in life. My whole life is a distraction. I told him a minute ago, I, listen, my father-in-law had made this trip before he died to Alaska. And I guess he was afraid, so he had some bear mace. Not shark repellent, like on Batman. I mean, the real stuff. Bear repellent. I found it the other day. I gave it to Autumn, and it didn't get put up, and it's in the living. So somebody knocked it off the shelf yesterday, and there's bear mace leaking in my house. You know what I mean? Everybody comes running out of the house. and All I wanted to do, we'd been going all day. All I wanted to do was go in there and sit down and just find a quiet place and study and read. And all, now I've got a house full of bear mace. There's always something. But you just got to keep on pushing. Just keep striving. Here, verse number two, so that thou incline thine heart unto wisdom and apply thine heart. That means to to stretch, to bend. It means to go beyond what you think you can go. Apply your heart, stretch your heart, push harder, try harder. 
I'm not talking about walking in the flesh. I'm talking about disciplining your flesh. I'm not talking about aesthetics. I'm talking about saying when your flesh, when, you're, when everything in you says quit, you say no. When you say I'm too tired to read, you say, but you know what? God, I believe you got something for me. And you read anyway. When you're too tired to pray, but you say, God, I'm going to pray anyway. When your flesh and your body and your mind and everything says no, then you apply your heart. You stretch yourself. Now we got two more places. Let's go to the next one. Proverbs chapter 22. Bow down thine ear and hear the words of the wise and apply thine heart unto my knowledge. That word apply there, it means to, to find a place to sit down. You wouldn't believe this, but it actually it's Talking about your rear end, about plopping down. That's exactly what it means. Yeah. Apply thine heart unto knowledge. It means to find a place. God gave you this cushion. Your rump. Yeah. To sit down and learn. To find a place and to stop and say, God, help me. God, teach me. There's always something saying, go here, go here, go do this, go do that. I'll start to read my Bible. And then I'll remember, oh man, I've got to go do this. And I'll get up. You know, something about little kids, they, they like, sometimes, and I like it when they do this. They'll just say, sit down a minute, Daddy, sit here. And they'll just want to sit on your lap. You ever have your kid just crawl up on your lap and just sit? And it's almost like you can't believe it because they're always busy. They're always doing something. Every once in a while, one of them will just crawl up there and just, just look at you. And they, what do you want? You know, you're thinking in your mind, but you don't want to ruin it. And they don't, they don't ask for anything. They just, want to, they just want to be with you. They just sit there real nice and cuddle up I guess husbands and wives could do that every once in a while Amen. I mean some of you fellas your wife just sit down beside you and say what's up nothing I just want to sit here by you a minute just want to be with you I guess even a, maybe the picture of a husband just sit down beside his wife say, you know, just, let's just sit together for a minute let's just talk together not, and maybe not even say anything. It's the idea of communing. Just being together. And I think sometimes here, we read our Bible, He says, bow down thine ear and hear the words of the wise and apply thine heart unto my knowledge. God said, you want to learn about me? Then spend some time with me. Just, just, where are we going, God? Um, does it matter? Amen. Nope. Not as long as I'm with you. I've said to my kids a lot of times, they'll tell you, I'll say, hey, you want to go with me? And with, if they say, where are you going? That's the wrong answer. I'm not looking for them to want to go somewhere and me take them there. I'm wanting to know, do you want to go with me? Where are you going? Wrong answer. Do you want to go with me? Yes. Do you want to know where I'm going? No. I don't care where you're going. I just want to be with you. 
You know, I believe God's looking for somebody that just wants to be with Him. I think, I think sometimes if we just would spend some time with God, God would look down and say, um, don't you have something to do? You're busy all the time. And you just look back and say, God, no, not today. I just want to spend some time with you. I just want to fellowship with you. He walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me that I'm his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. Apply your heart to wisdom. Something doesn't have to be going on all the time. Now the last one. Look in Proverbs 23. Apply thine heart into instruction and thine ears to the words of knowledge. <clears throat> Simply means this, attain to it. It means to find that place where God communes with you. To, to, to figure out, to overcome any obstacles, to overcome hurdles, to put aside distractions, and just say, you know what? I'm going, God, I'm going to come into a place where, I, where you have my attention. God, I want you to speak to me. Can I tell you something that I want to try to tell you to try to save you some grief? If God wants your attention, he knows how to get it. If God wants to reach down and Shake you. He knows how to shake you. God told Jonah, he said, I got a job for you. Jonah said, I don't want it. God said, I want you to go to Nineveh. I don't want to. I'm not listening. I said, yes, you will. I'm not going to listen to you, God. I gave you instructions. I don't want to hear them. So Jonah went out and got on a ship to go down the other direction. And God sent a storm. Jonah was sleeping. He was trying to sleep it off. I don't want to hear it. God got his attention, didn't he? You know, if you and I would just, a lot of the reasons why we don't want to hear from God is he might have something for us to do. Hey, he might have a message. He wants you to relay to somebody. Listen, if you'll listen to God and walk with God and you read the truths of this book right here, it's hard to keep quiet. You're going to have conversation with people and they're going to be telling you their problems and all that's going on and you're going to say, hey, let me tell you what I read in the Bible. Let me tell you what the Bible says. And they may not want to hear it, but you tell them anyway. Amen. Next time you see him, they say, boy, I'm having a tough time. And you say, let me tell you the answer. He starts telling them what the Bible says. And they'll say, well, that might work for you, but it won't work for me. Yeah, it will. But you won't let it work. Just keep telling them. Just keep telling them. Just keep telling them what the Bible says. You know, the problem with that is we won't let God tell us. Apply thine heart unto instruction. How many times have I heard that before? How many times have I heard that? Same old, just, you know, you know what? We need instruction. Apply. Apply yourself. How many of you ever heard that? You know why you don't succeed? Because you won't apply yourself. 
You won't commit to it. You won't dedicate any time. You won't give any energy. You won't put forth any effort. But friend, listen, I'm saying when it comes to your walk with God, when it comes to being a Christian, will you apply yourself? Will you give yourself? Will you walk with God? Will you give forth the energy that's needed? You'll be, the, you'll be about as good a Christian as you want to be. You say, well, I'm here. I come to hear you preach. Take your Bible, turn to Ezekiel 33, verse number 30. Ezekiel 33, verse number 30. I want you to see, sadly, the attitude of most people that call themselves Christians. Isaiah 30, verse number 30. Also, or Ezekiel, I'm sorry. Also thou son of man, Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 30. I know I've told you 17 different references, but Ezekiel chapter 33, verse number 30. Also thou son of man, the children of thy people are still are talking against thee by the walls and in the doors of the houses and speak one to another. Everyone to his brother, saying, Come, I pray you, and hear what is the word that cometh from the Lord. I mean, these people were saying, Let's go hear the preacher. And they come unto thee as the people cometh. And they set before thee as my people. And they hear thy words. But they will not do them. They will not do them. For with their mouth they show much love. But their heart goeth after their, what? Covetousness. You see that word covetousness? That means something that you want. Something that you apply yourself to. What you covet, what you want. Is what you apply yourself to. Do you want to know God? Do you covet? To use that terminology. Do you desire a long for? A walk with God? People do what they want to do. People go after what they want to go after. Sadly. Most folks don't want anything in life. They just want to. What, what are you doing today? I don't know. What are you going to do tomorrow? I don't know. Got any plans? I don't know. I guess this may as well die. I don't have nothing to live for. That's sad. Teach us the number of our days that we may apply our hearts, that we may fill our hearts, apply our hearts into wisdom. Stretch after it. Go, for, go after it. Reach. Go beyond what your flesh says you can do. Desire to hear instructions. And say, God, help me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day that you've given us. Lord, thank you for watching over us. Thank you, dear Lord God, for your word. I pray that you'd help us, Lord, to listen. Dear God, to apply. I just ask you to help us to do that. In Jesus' name, our heads are bowed, eyes closed. Would you stand with me? I'm not going to ask you to do anything. I'm not going to ask you to come up here and just do anything. I'm just going to ask you this. Are you, are you willing? Is, is a relationship with God worth enough to apply yourself? Or are you going to let every excuse under the sun keep you from a relationship with God? If there's something God's told you to do or wants you to do or you're supposed to do, then do it. Don't be distracted. Don't be led around all the time. Don't let everything else take preeminence. Come to the place in your life where you realize that the thing that I desire more than anything else is to walk with God in a relationship with Him. 
And you know, when you do that, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto thee. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray you'd help us, Lord, to be a people that apply ourselves. That apply ourselves in search of knowledge of God and our relationship with God and time with you, Lord God. Help us not to settle for excuses. Lord, help us, if needs be, to get up early or to stay up late. And Lord God, to not yield to the flesh, but yield to the Spirit. Lord, help us to not be excuse makers. But God, help us to apply ourselves to the desire, to the search for knowledge for God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.